forced appreciation, right? So we're going to build the value. We're going to grab a property that's underperforming. We're going to do a big renovation. We're going to modernize it. We're going to do new areas like common areas, lighting, suites, all that stuff. And we're going to raise the rents through this forced appreciation. Are you ready to take the next step in your multifamily investing career? The time has never been better than now. Think Multifamily's Deal Analysis Workshop is a comprehensive live training course that will help increase your skills, knowledge, confidence as an investor before you invest. This workshop is a unique experience that provides hands-on instruction and guidance directly from Mark Kinney, who has completed over 100 multifamily syndications valued at over $1 billion. This course goes beyond theory as you will be presented with real case studies and practice scenarios to work out in class. By the end of the training, you will have significantly improved your ability to evaluate deals quickly, make informed decisions, and take your investing skills to the next level with confidence. For more information, and to register for Think Multifamily's Deal Analysis Workshop, go to thinkmultifamily.com forward slash D-A-W, use code Whitney100 to save $100. The Deal Analysis Workshop is designed for both beginner and experienced investors. Whether you are looking for a foundational understanding of how to analyze multifamily investments or looking for fresh insight on how to pivot your analysis method for this current market cycle, this is a workshop you have been looking for. Register today at thinkmultifamily.com forward slash D-A-W. Use code Whitney100 to save $100. Welcome back to the Real Estate Syndication Show with Whitney Sewell. Wait a second. It's not Whitney on the phone today or on the Zoom or on the podcast. I always say that three ways. It's actually Josh McAllen. I'm so honored to be a guest host for our great friend, Whitney Sewell. I've had him on our big podcast many, many times, and he and I just get along great. So I said, please let me add value to your community because I'm part of it. So today, Stephen Gessis is with us because he has been laying down this whole series of masterclasses on heavy value add. And today he's going to, he's quaking in his boots. He's scared <laughs> to death to be on the show today. Stephen, welcome back to the big show. Thank you very much. All right. You're here. I hope you have your seatbelt on. If you're sitting in a seatbelt chair, what? are the four best value adds that you can add. And I do want you to try to show me maybe in an example. So either the last deal you did or the one you're doing now, if I was doing what you were doing, how could I learn from you? I should say, what are the best ways to transform the value? You threw out a few a couple of days ago that were cool, but which ones let's rank them in order. Like what are the best ways oh, you're going to heavy is a lift tough these? One. You really did put me to the test on this one. We're ranking. I did. Oh. Let's go. Because what we're trying to do is create forced appreciation. You and I care about, why don't you define forced appreciation for the That's listener? Right. You just, if you could, you got a lot of homework here, brother, start by explaining what forced appreciation is. And then tell us why you choose the value add techniques that you do the elements. All right. So real simple, forced appreciation, right? So we're going to build the value. We're going to grab a property that's underperforming. We're going to do a big renovation. We're going to modernize it. We're going to do new areas like common areas, lighting, suites, all that stuff. And we're going to raise the rents through this forced appreciation, right? So we're going to modernize it and do this modernization. We're making, we're self-inventing value. Right. And that's something that's amazing in multifamily because this is like one of the only spaces you could really do it at scale in alternative investing. Cause you're not really going to, you know, how many cars can you force appreciation on even classic cars? Exactly. One time. So that's forced appreciation. Okay. And then you said, what are the top four items for the forced appreciation? Right. Okay. For sure. For sure. New. Luxury vinyl flooring. It's got to happen in the suite. I'm writing that down. Numero uno. Got Numero it. uno. And here's why. From every angle, right? So number one, aesthetically. Okay. Right away. You get the most modern aesthetic look, feel. All right. That's important. Longevity. Actual product. How it performs. Okay. Against unit turns. Turnovers. And how it smells, that's part of longevity, okay? Because if you think about it, right, if you did the carpet thing, you got all these additional add-on costs, right? You got to clean the carpet. 
you got to replace the carpet because it wears down or somebody spilled something on it or somebody tore it or they moved their furniture twice and that's it. It's game over. You got to restretch it. I don't know. Are you restretching carpet anymore? So that alone, right? Big value add component. I would say this is probably one of the most critical pieces. All right. Okay. Next item. All right. Which is kind of an amalgamation of a few items. And that's going to be all of your water sense fixtures, right? Got to do it. That one's kind of like, that one's 101, right? So it's not on my top list because, because you already should be doing it. So it should already be as part of your top four. So it's not number one. A lot of people will say, oh, energy is going to be my number one. Well, sure. I mean, but really, listen, you're going to be doing it anyways, right? You're going to be putting in the low flow toilets. You're going to be putting in the low flow shower fixture, the low flow faucet fixture, the type of fixture you choose, that's on you, but you could work on that. You know, that's also, that's going to have subcategories, sub lists here, right? So you asked me about the top four, these are generalists still, right? So this right. is like, we're not specialists here. Specialists is you're asking me within that number two category, how many subcategories do you have? And we have a few, there's a few of those top line categories that do carry that with them. So you have to think about that, right? Because they're all involved as part of your overall renovation. It could be part of the look, feel, aesthetic, purpose, all these things you got to think about it. So top number one was the LVT flooring. Number two, they're going to be your, your water sense fixtures. And the reason we also get into that because it does dive a little bit into mechanical. And a lot of times what we're doing on these forced heavy value add appreciation properties, you're also doing like shutoff valves, right? And a lot of people forget this little line item, right? And you're like, what's this guy talking about shutoff valves? But look, a lot of times you're showing up, it's an older property. It's got a lot of work to do. And so you forget. It's like, oh man, I got another 30 bucks per unit in shutoff valves. That's a lot. It could be a lot, a hundred units, you know, very quickly prices climb. So you got to be cognizant. That's why I said within a category, there could be a subcategory. So keep that in mind. Then the next thing is, right? So number three I mean, look, this one's a hands down. This is the simple one. You got to paint it, all right? <laughs> you got to paint it, all right? But it's got to be the right paint. So you can't just be like, oh, we're going to show up and paint it. So number one, you have to have a purpose. So first purpose has to be, I'm making it all standard. I'm not putting in a bunch of jazz here. Like we're going to find a neutral modern color that we could paint everything with, all right? But we're not just going to paint everything. And so that's how we're going to paint it. So that's like, we got to paint it. That's number three, no matter what, but we're going to paint it. We're going to think about, okay, when they move out, am I going to have flat walls? Am I going to have semi-gloss? What's the easiest way? What's my easiest path here on unit turn? And how am I going to reduce the burden? What is it usually? What type oh, of- man, I knew you were going to ask me, oh, you know, we're still kind of battling this. It is semi-gloss it probably holds up the best, but it's impossible to touch up. So you got to paint corner to corner, regardless of what you're doing. All right. right. You can't beat the system. I'm sorry. You got to paint corner to corner, man. <laughs> you have to be that way. All right. Every time. Look, we've tried. We've gone round and round, battled this thing. But you got to also got to keep in mind, you got to paint your ceilings. Don't skimp out. You got to put a fresh coat on that thing. It's got to smell good. And you got to get it ready for that next evolution. It's next life. Right. And part of that is who you're going to attract through your marketing and who's going to walk through the door and who's going to apply. And I mean, all this plays. Right. So. This is number three is paint. And you can't, again, you're not just going to paint everything just the same color. No, you got to do the trim work. Sorry, man. You got to <laughs> paint the trim. You got to do the semi-gloss. You got to put it, you got to put in the effort. Sorry. Like you got to do it the right way. Like it's just going to have to be that way. And we're going to spend the money doing it. Like, but we're going to do it the right way. We're going to do it one time. Hopefully the guy doing it will do it one time, but we're going to do it one time. All right, so that's three. So we got number one was the LVT. Number two was the water sense fixtures. Number three is paint. Mm, number four, number four has got to be, we got to hit the common area. Common area, flooring and lighting. Whatever we're going to do, bare bones, got to do common area, flooring. And that flooring, we're going to change it. We're going to take the carpet out. We're going to take it. We're going to also put in the LVT. And we're going to do that for the reason this has to happen. It's got to happen. Man, we operate both garden style and tower apartments. And here's the thing. People use all sorts of products to cook with. That stuff seeps into the pores of the carpet, of the wall. So we got to really be thought forward because that next evolution of this, after this, after we do such a heavy value add, right? Or you sitting 
as an operator, you're doing this heavy value add, right? Look, you want to preserve that and you want to be able to maximize its value by being able to then market it and bring in the best possible candidates through that door and to be able to capture those best candidates after your marketing team did such a great job, all those things have to play. And that's the top four. Yep. That sounds going to give you credit because I would have thought you would have slipped in there some stone tops or the kitchen. No, we're already doing that, man. That's already status quo. Well, paint, you throw paint in there. I mean, I'm thinking (laughs) you're going to throw paint in there. But you got to do it the right way. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask you for then the next, the future, because you threw them out in an earlier episode we did. You said the future of value add, maybe you're already doing the future and it it revolves around technology. And I want to ask you, before you get into the, the, let's do another ranking of the tech options that you want us to do. I love these first four, the mission critical value adds. But what about, you said earlier, first of all, I got to ask the question, LVT flooring. I like it. You like it. Very cool stuff. Noise transmission. Doesn't it increase your problems for noise transmission between units? And how do you solve that? I should just ask. So we actually, we use a really nice high grade product. So we're not just putting in a, an expensive, the product that we're putting in, you're going to walk into Home Depot, that thing's over $3 a foot. So we're putting in a nice high grade product that also has a built-in foam pad. And so we're not getting this noise transmission issue really throughout, but in South Florida to this point, so we have some multifamily that we're doing out of South Florida, right in South Beach, a few blocks off the water, love that location. And so there actually, there's a soundproofing code that you have to abide by. So you got to put in special soundproofing, anything over one floor, second floor and above, you got to put in an additional layer of soundproofing. Uh, What does that typically look like? What is that soundproofing? uh, It's just another underlayment product. So it's like- On the floor. It's always on the floor. Yeah, so it's in addition to the LVT and the built-in pad, you have a whole nother layer that's specific. It's got to meet a specific, I think it's got to be over like 60 ASTC out in South Florida. So there's, there's a particular code that you have to abide by. Well, I've kept you too long on that one. Cause that's just me getting nitty gritty. I always worry about saying, so let's jump into the future of value add elements that you threw out earlier. I'm going to see if you remember some of the great ones from another show, but go ahead. Tell me what are the, the future ones that you think or current ones that are going to really transform value. They're going to change the way you can charge and they're going to force more appreciation. Let's go. Top one futuristic value add that we need. Go. This one is actually a Bluetooth speaker. What? What? What you talking about, Willis? Bluetooth speaker? (laughs) People love the light, built-in light with Bluetooth speaker. This thing is the ultimate sales piece because you hit the light and it goes doo-doo. As soon as you walk in and it connects to your phone and that's it, you are connected. That's instant in our units. Whoa. What are we talking about an investment? What does that cost you? I don't know, maybe 30, 50 bucks per unit. We're talking about a speaker that's sitting in the ceiling or where is the speaker? No, it's in the hallway light. It's integrated in the light, in the light fixture. It's got the little Bluetooth speaker integrated in the light. Is it in the hallway of the corridor, the common area? No, in your unit. Okay, you walk into your unit, you put your keys down, you turn the light on, and your phone jumps through to the speaker? Yeah, and then you could say, and then you're connected instantly to the Alexa, and you could say, Alexa, you know, we have an app that we're rolling out where you're going to say, Alexa, can you put in a scheduled maintenance order with Smartland, and it will just send it to our portfolio database, you know? Good job. That surprised me. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Number two. (laughs) Number two is definitely the USB outlets, no doubt about it. So literally just take the outlet out and put the one in that has those extra little jackarooskis on the side. Yeah, but it's so much value because, you know, you're in your bedroom, you're in your living room, you got your friends over and everybody's always looking for that darn square. Yeah, the dongle thing. They yeah, call you it. got your cable, but no square. You uh, know? I'm going to throw this one. Out. What about USC or USB-C, like that littler one that all my Apple stuff now has? Well, that's just our next evolution of more modern USB. Good Lord. Okay, so, okay, fine. That's a cute little one. Got it. What else? You can't charge more for that. Maybe you could. Maybe you could. Perceived yeah, value. Package, I get it. Right. So you got to look at it as a collective whole. And actually, what we're gonna we're dismantling the package, and we're gonna offer it. This is a product line, so it's an a la carte service. You'll be able to move in, and you can rent the smart TV. Let's talk about that. So smart TV. You haven't said that one yet. That's pretty cool. But that implies Wi-Fi in the building. Did we skip over that? 
I mean, I suppose, but we already do that as part of our regular. Operation. No upcharge fee. I don't pay anything for that. Well, that's separate. That's separate. So you will pay. So as a resident, you'll buy the internet directly from Smartland rather than AT and T. Okay, Verizon. now there. See, you buried the lead. <laughs> okay, that therein lies a really cool thing. So am I paying fourteen hundred dollars for the room, the unit, yep. and then I'm paying a technology pack? Yeah. So your technology pack will include the internet, which will be. We have three internet packages, twenty nine ninety five. Three speeds that you'll buy. So we have you know up to the premium speed of forty nine ninety five a month. So what we do is we'll go in and we'll actually purchase the wholesale line directly from the local provider. Sure, sure. And then just like how you arrive at a hotel, you'll get your own individual pin. And so as long as you're paying your monthly due as you would be to AT and T, rather than us being status quo and taking a rebate from AT and T. We're just selling it. You know, we have a pretty big captive audience. We have a hundred units plus typically asset. So in this case, rather than getting a few hundred bucks a month off of you know a rebate, we're able to just sell the internet directly to the residents. What are we paying, Billy Bob? And I just anything between twenty nine ninety five to forty four ninety five. Oh, so that's it. Yeah, I get all those other fancy things. No, no, so that's just for the internet, and then you'll have an ability to now. So before a few quarters ago, you were getting already all those smart things in your unit: the Alexa, the Bluetooth speaker. The USB outlets, that was just already included as part of your market rate rent. That was just what we did. Now you'll be able to upgrade and let's say you want a 55 or a 65 inch TV. It's going to be another 29 bucks a month or 19 bucks a month, whatever it is. And then you could add to that a smart coffee maker. That's going to be nine bucks a month. And you could add a smart microwave. That's 19 bucks a month. And you could add a smart. So we have a bunch of little smart. This actually works. See the TV, you already got me a little confused. From here does it every day. I love this. So talk to me about this TV idea. So how many people, first of all, we're going to do, let's go back to the Wi-Fi payment. How many of the hundred rooms are going to, on average, pay you for the middle package on that or or any package? Yes. Everybody? Well, no. So it's primarily, it rolls out median as middle tier package. And then of that 50% of those will buy it? or Yeah. So the absorption rate's right around like 40%. And then we have a dedicated staffer that works on, you know, doing an upsell and and selling the product to the residents. and Because otherwise they'll just use their cellular data is what you're saying. Yeah. Or it could be like right now, actually our absorption has been increasing because really what we learned, we were doing a bunch of surveys internally. It's part of the sales process. So as long as our sales team is better educated internally, we're seeing a a much quicker absorption rate. Yeah. I'm very impressed with you, buddy. Okay. And these things <laughs> you add to the valuation of the building. That's the thing people might need to remember Correct. who are listening here. So I imagine, okay, let's get down to EBITDA. How much of the $49 per month in Wi-Fi is net profit to you off that transaction? Yeah, it's a very high margin. I mean, it's like- Wow. Okay. Nine- margins. But what's fascinating actually is we did a small study. So that breakwater, we, we talked about in a different episode, the tower asset that we- yep. Cycle on. So that's where we launched that initial idea at where we beta tested it. And so we did that beta testing there. It costs about $60,000, $65,000 in equipment. And then the back end value with the actual absorption that it built into the NOI, that $60,000 investment was worth around like three hundred and fifty dollars or $400,000. So an actual value towards the NOI. So, and then we do other cool stuff. So you asked me the other top tech thing that we do in the buildings is our payless pay by phone laundry systems. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So you just scan a QR code. You have the app on your phone. So you load the money right into your phone. The laundry service machines actually do not need to be connected. They're connected through the cell signal in your phone. So they're activated when you scan the QR code. And so you have to have a mobile phone device. But so what we've done is we've been, since we have the tower property, larger properties, hundred plus, you know, decent size pool of uh, population, We've been removing the laundry management companies out of the buildings oh. and we've been putting in our own pay by phone laundry services and we're increasing revenue, laundry revenues, almost 10 X per resident as far as the bottom line. And so the equipment's actually fairly inexpensive. You'd be surprised, but the payback on it is absolutely huge. And so those are some of the other cool techie things that we do just as a kind of as a status quo. Very, very cool. Well, you know, it's been fun getting to know the deep dive with you, Steve. Anything you wanted to share with the audience before we let you go? No, if you'd like to visit us, you know, visit us at smartland.com. We're really accessible. You can email me, text me direct, visit us at our office, either out of Miami or out of our Cleveland location. 
you know, we love entertaining folks and showing them what we do. We're really proud of what we've done. And so welcome and smartland.com. And thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a great URL, by the way, smartland.com. And since we're sharing some ways to follow up, I just want to share one quick, quick thing. I think you'd love this, Stephen. One of our favorite parts of being part of Whitney Sewell's community is he has this foundation that we are contributors to, my wife and I, called the Omna Foundation, and it helps families it's full pass through money. He just puts the money towards helping people pay for the adoption process and giving families, children that need it, a forever home. So if anybody wants to join us, Melanie and I are at supporting the Omna Foundation, O-M-N-A foundation.org. I know it's probably close to so many of our listeners' hearts to help the children. So, hey, Stephen, absolutely wonderful to have you on the show. Cannot wait to follow up. And where's home for you in case I have to drive over and see one of your cool properties? You are in Miami. You're in Cleveland. Okay. Some of your assets are in Miami, but most of you are working out of Cleveland. Thank you for that. We will talk to you again soon, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope that you have learned a lot from the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're telling your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show and how they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today.